ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. San Diego police are investigating how a toddler and an adult ended up inside the elephant enclosure at the San Diego Zoo this afternoon. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Our ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo is live outside the zoo with what we know right now. Laura. Well, Steve and Kimberly, what we know is that thankfully no one was hurt during this entire incident. The zoo closing right now at six o'clock and we have seen people slowly coming out. Both the child, her father and the elephants are all OK. I do want to show you some video that we took of the man police were taking into custody. Cameras capturing him in handcuffs being put into a San Diego police patrol car. Police tell me the man went through two security fences meant to keep the public out of the elephant enclosure. One of those is electrified. Once inside of the elephant enclosure, police say the elephants became upset and the man then tried to quickly get out with his two year old daughter. In the process, he dropped his daughter but was able to pick her up and get out of the enclosure okay. The zoo sending ABC 10 News the following statement confirming the incident, saying the habitat houses African and Asian elephants. A spokesperson saying the zoo will follow the police department's guidance. Witnesses describing the panic of noticing what was happening. And we were standing right there. We're standing 20 yards away from, and, and from what were you yelling? yelling, dude, what are you doing? Get out of there. Get the baby out. What are you doing? Get out of the elephant enclosure. The elephant is like screaming and charging him and he's unaware of what's going on um, and barely got out of there with his life and with his child's life. Just a scary situation. No one was hurt. Uh, just moments ago, we did update from the San Diego Police Department and we were told that the man could face at least child endangerment charges. Police are also investigating to find out if this person was under the influence. Reporting live from the zoo, Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. A toddler is OK. That is the best news. Laura, thank you. Turning now to coronavirus, the Petco Park vaccination superstation is permanently shutting down operations tomorrow. Tens of thousands of San Diegans have been vaccinated at the Petco site. Our ABC tennis reporter Mimi Alcala looks at what could be in the works to replace it. It's been such a privilege to partner with the San Diego Padres, the county and the city to bring this vaccination station to life. The first of its kind in San Diego County, the Petco Park vaccination superstation is officially seizing operations at the end of the day on Saturday, March 20th. Brendan Kramer, the chief operating officer of UCSD Health, which runs the site, says while there were some closures due to weather damage and vaccine shortages causing delayed appointments, the site managed to give more than 215,000 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine to San Diegans. Petco itself almost took care of a quarter of the vaccinations in San Diego. Now, some people who received their first dose at the Petco site won't be able to get the second there. I really feel we have uh, achieved the majority, if not all, of the second doses to be scheduled. However, if there are still some second doses hanging out there, we encourage those people to either via my turn or directly through a care provider to schedule at another site. The county has always known this site located at Petco Park's tailgate lot would be turned over to the Padres before opening day on April 1st. Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says the county is eyeing possibly moving operations to the convention center once more vaccines are available. We'd love to continue to work with UC San Diego. They've been a tremendous partner and ally. UC San Diego Health uh, stands ready to partner. For now, UCSD Health is focusing on its other superstation on campus and a mobile vaccination unit which travels across the county, providing vaccines in some of the hardest hit areas. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. That site is expected to officially close between 5 and 7 p.m. tomorrow. And the Del Mar vaccine superstation, it will be closed once again tomorrow. The site at the Del Mar Fairgrounds was also closed Wednesday and today because of a vaccine delivery shortfall. It will be closed next weekend for the same reason. Anyone with appointments during the closures will be rescheduled automatically through the MyTurn online appointment system. This is a big night for moviegoers in San Diego County. Theaters reopened today after being shut down entirely for months. ABC 10 News reporter Jennifer De La Cruz is live at Town Center in Claremont with a long-awaited Friday night at the movies. Jen. 
Hey guys, they've made it so easy. You basically don't have to touch anything once you get here. Everybody's wearing masks and is social distancing. You don't even have to go to the box office. You can get a ticket online. A gentleman here will scan it for you. Off to the concession stand. They have a lot of goodies that they're pumping out right now, but you do have to keep your distance. And then as you get into the theater, there's social distancing there as well. Everybody that we've talked to is so glad they're back open and they feel very safe. Okay. The box office is back in business for movie theaters across the county. San Diegans were heading to Reading Cinemas for the first Friday night at the movies since last year. Haven't seen a movie in maybe two years, so really excited to be celebrating this. Now that San Diego is in the red tier, theaters can operate indoors with a maximum of 25% capacity or 100 people. Natasha Mulholland with Reading says they've taken every precaution to keep people safe. I want to see a movie myself. I'm going to see every movie I can <laughs> in the following weeks. I'm just thrilled. When you book a ticket online, seats around you will automatically be blocked off to maintain social distancing. They're cleaning every theater between showings and using upgraded air filters. They're opting for cashless payment options and masks are required at all times. And while theaters were shut down, companies had to get creative to stay in business. Reading launched their own streaming service called Angelica Anywhere, so viewers could still catch their favorite flicks in the comfort of their own homes. At 25%, it's very, very difficult to make a profit. And, you know, all we want to do is to, you know, maintain an awareness in the community's mind and, and hope that people come back eventually. I think people have been so cooped up that it'll be a blessing to be able to get out of the house. And if you don't feel comfortable coming here in person, that's totally fine. There is an option for you. Reading has a streaming service where you can still watch your favorite movies from the comfort of your own home. AMC is also opening 40 of their locations in California this weekend. Reporting live in Claremont, Jennifer Dela Cruz, ABC 10 News. People ready to get out safely. Thank you, Jen. Legoland will reopen April 1st. That's the first day theme parks are allowed to welcome back visitors under state guidelines. Legoland will start with preview days before reopening more attractions on April 15th. Capacity will be limited and the park will give priority to hotel guests, annual pass holders and existing ticket holders who haven't been able to use them yet. Guests are required to purchase tickets in advance on the Legoland website. The county reported another 421 cases today, while our test positivity rate rose just a bit to 4%. Another 13 people lost their lives to COVID, bringing that total to just under 3,500. The pandemic could have a lasting impact on the transportation here in San Diego County. Bus and trolley trips are down about 60% since February of 2020. And although car traffic has ticked up back up just a bit, rush hours still they are not nearly what they used to be. But the executive director of Sandag says it would be foolish to change a generation of transportation plan based on a one time event. The pandemic will be over. We cannot as a society move forward like this. Kids cannot continue to be at home. Therefore, it's short sighted to say scrap everything. Let's start over again. Sandag is currently updating its long term transportation plan with a mandate to slash greenhouse gas emissions. And you can stay on top of any new developments with coronavirus by downloading our 10 News app. A free version is available in the App Store. In the wake of the shootings this week in Georgia, San Diegans are coming together to call out hate crimes against the Asian and Pacific Islander communities. Today, standing up against hate was a central theme of a mass at the University of San Diego. At a rally today downtown, community groups pointed to a rise in violence since the pandemic started. This kind of violence needs to be named as it is specifically racialized misogyny, sexualization, fetishization of Asians. This is the long legacy of racist gender violence. Today, Governor Gavin Newsom also said perpetrators of hate must be held accountable. California has adopted the nation's first statewide ethnic studies curriculum for high schools. The State Board of Education approved it unanimously last night. And the nearly 900-page curriculum took three years to craft. It centers on four groups. African Americans, Chicanos and Latinos, Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders and Native Americans. It also includes lesson plans on Jews and Arab, Sikh and Armenian Americans.
A man is in the hospital tonight after his truck smashed into a building in North Park. Now this happened this afternoon in the 3600 block of El Cajon Boulevard. A red truck was T-boned by a larger truck, sending that truck across the lanes where it hit a street sign and then the building. The people inside that building, which houses a small market and an herb shop, they were evacuated. The driver in that red truck went to the hospital with unspecified injuries. Painful deja vu for an El Cajon auto shop. Surveillance video shows the moment a car rammed into a precision auto on East Main Street last night, then backed up, hit another business across the street. A witness described what happened next. I heard this boom and I, that's a wreck. And then just a few seconds later, here another big boom. And it was like, well, this guy isn't stopping, you know. And at that point, I grabbed my phones and took off around the corner here and saw the guy climbing out of the passenger side. He took off running? Oh, yeah, he took off running. As soon as his feet hit the ground, he was just... Description, best description ever. The driver was gone by the time police arrived, but they eventually tracked him down and arrested him on suspicion of DUI. And this is not the first time something like this has happened at Precision Auto. This is video from 2019 when a driver crashed into two cars before hitting the building.